So the dessert we're doing today is a Scottish dessert called a cranachan. This is a very traditional, easy made because it is done with the main fruit of Scotland, which is raspberries. The raspberries and blackberries are the indigenous fruits of Scotland. And all it really is, is a either a honey and whiskey or a drambui, which is what we're going to be doing today, laced whipped cream with a little toasted steel cut oats and on top of all folded in. There's a few variations that we can do for this. So we're going to start off here first with a little bit of our whipped cream. And we're using heavy whipping cream because what we want to do is make our, our whipped cream out of. And the one thing I want to talk about a little bit also is on the dairy aspect in Scotland and in, and in Britain and in Ireland as well. They are, all of their, they would use double cream instead of the heavy whipping cream we're using. All of their cream, their butter, each of it in portions that probably, the most of them are 3% more milk fat and 10 and 15% less water per volume than anything we make here in the United States. Their heavy whipping cream, or what they call double cream, is actually, like I said, 3% more milk fat. So it actually has a creamier flavor to it than, than ours does. If you really wanted to mimic it, you could do heavy whipping cream mixed with creme fraiche. And a little combination of that too would get it up to the way they would have theirs. So we're gonna start this off, whipping this up. Uh, bring that. Now one thing you have to be, be careful with is when you add much into the whipped cream. Well, the first thing we're gonna add though is a little bit of vanilla. And at this stage, it's not gonna do too much. We're not gonna add our alcohol into this until we get whipped up. The alcohol will cause it to fall and crash. So we're gonna wait on that one. While that's whipping up, we are going to get our fire going here. We're gonna take steel cut oats, pin oats, that's what they actually call them over there. And we're just gonna lightly toast all of this. You have to watch it pretty fast because they can toast up pretty fast. Now there's some other combinations you can do with this. Like I said, we're gonna do a drambui version. You could do a nice, uh, because it's not a fine, this is when we're in whiskey, cooking with whiskey, you could use a nice single malt, like McAllen's. Um, the thing with cooking with whiskey, you have to look at cooking like whiskey like cooking with cheese. And you have to look at Irish whiskey, uh, bourbon, sour mash, Canadian whiskey, and scotch. Think of it as Irish whiskey, and a lot of people love Irish whiskey, but it's a little lighter in flavor. You have to kind of look at it almost like Velveeta, or like, a, or like the American single cheese or something like that. It's great by itself like that, but it's not when you're gonna. A little heavier scotch, single malts, is gonna be like a very fine, mature cheddar cheese. And so you want to cook according to that way. So you want to cook with items that are, oh, we are out of fire here. You want to cook with items that you're not going to apply too much of the fire to. Here we go. The more exposure to the heat of a whiskey is the same thing as if you put more exposure to heat in cheese. It starts breaking down all the skill that they put, put into it the matureness of the cheese, the matureness of, of, the, of the whiskey, it'll all start breaking it down, and then you've lost the good, the good parts of what you wanted to put in it in the first place. Like I said, today we're gonna do a little drambui, but the other version is doing it with, high, uh, with a, a really nice single malt with a little bit of honey. Each of them. So as you can kind of see, it's starting to get a little heavy. This is when we're gonna add in our liqueur. We don't want to break it down too much, but we definitely want that flavor. And this is my end of my bottle, so we'll just throw a little extra in there for everybody. Nobody's complaining, right? And I'm also going to just add in just a little bit of honey. Now, honey is a really big thing in, in Celtic cuisine. Okay, so there we go. We don't want to get it too much and break it down. Honey used to be a way that they would go before uh, in Stone Age, before where they would go and make it so that you could go and bake your food. You would go and take fish or chicken or some sort of poultry and mix it maybe with some mustard seeds or so 
and then pack it completely with the honey all the way around, making a nice seal all the way around your meat, and you can put that in the fire, and that'll act like a baking agent. Kind of an old-fashioned baking style. Now, other people, like the Welsh, they have an excellent way of using honey um, with a roast, with their roast leg of lamb that I found. This is coming in an upcoming book here. They'll put slivers of fresh ginger in their lamb. Something new concept for everybody. Then they will cover it with a honey whiskey butter and make a little glaze out of it. And then as it's cooking slowly, and you remember cooking with lamb, you gotta cook at a lower temperature for longer periods of time. Then you, they put apple cider underneath it and constantly keep basting the lamb with the apple cider. So that honey with that whiskey, with the apple cider and the ginger, all flavors really, really well together. So like I said, you can kind of see here, we're toasting it all up these steel cut oats. And what that does is it gives the oat flavoring a nutty flavor to it as well. So it almost tastes like nuts, but if you have a nut allergy, you don't have to worry about because there's no nuts here. So the last thing right now, we're gonna take our whipped cream, that nice Drambouille flavored whipped cream. Which bowl? You want this empty one? That's fine. And then we're going to fold in our raspberries. Now you can serve this in, in, in Scotland how they would normally serve this. There we go. That's all done. Just enough heat still left to toast the last bits of it. So how you would normally toast this, this might be in a bowl on itself. I have found ways where I'll take a little phyllo dough and prior to this bake up, make a little cone shape out of it. And so that's got that nice egg with a little honey glaze to it and then, or egg wash glaze to it. And then put that, then stuff this with it and then put the toast up. Now you want to, you notice I'm not putting this right in now. The reason why is that it'll take the oats and it'll make them soggy. And we don't want to do that. This is like, so when we have everybody taste any of it, and I'll actually make a little, practice version of it right now. We'll just put this in here. And that's how you serve it. And all that flavoring together is good. That raspberries, the whiskey, and the little honey, and the, the whipped cream, especially in the base for it all. And the toasted steel cut oats. It's a really nice light dessert. It's simple, but it's, I mean, it was, it was an easy dessert, wasn't it, to make? Taking hardly any time for it all here. It's really, really tasty. More Now you can do a combination. You could add a little cinnamon in with this as well. And that would peek it in a different direction as well. Or nutmeg. Any one of those directions could make it a different flavoring for it. Up to you to get it. This is in my Scottish cookbook. And as you've noticed, and if I've told a few people, there are three different cookbooks back there. We got a Scottish cookbook, an Irish cookbook, and a Celtic style vegetarian cookbook. And I've won uh, awards in each one of them in Top Chef charity competitions in Denver, Dallas, and Las Vegas. Uh, just a little reiterate, the Scottish cookbook we won for a cockaleeky soup, which is a chicken and leek soup with a little white rice filler in there and dried plums. That was something the judges, when I competed, didn't recognize. A roast leg of lamb in a blueberry port wine demi-glace and a very decadent orange chocolate whiskey mousse, which if you are here last night, you got to go and try a little bit of that. Then in the Irish cookbook, we won for an Irish asparagus blue cheese salad, a three-time marinated Irish stew, you marinate the lamb first in onions, garlic, and butter, second in red wine, and third in Guinness. Makes a really nice thick soup. And then a Guinness chocolate walnut cake. That one's a very tasty. If you've ever had like an Italian dolce, it's got like that, that burnt chocolate flavor to it. This is that way, only a lot moister. And then for those of you who are meat eaters and don't look at the vegetarian cookbook, there's some good stuff in there like cauliflower and a whiskey cheese sauce, black eyed peas and a honey whiskey butter sauce, that's actually a recipe that the Scots came when they came over to North Carolina. They had this recipe with navy beans, but couldn't find navy beans. So adopting what was local was the black eyed peas, and it's really, really good. And then also what I like to call Celtic fried cheese, cheddar cheese wrapped in Parmesan risotto with chopped celery, rolled in panko breadcrumbs, and either flash fried or baked. And these are all traditional Scottish Celtic just food. A lot different than a lot of people think about. So does anybody have any questions for me about Celtic history, Celtic cuisine, yes. Pardon? I have done for a little bit of that and, and, and a lot of other type of berries and that like that, it's availability. 
Uh, Rowan berries is something we just did in the last one here. Anyone else for questions? You're just all dying to have a bite of this, aren't you? I can just tell. Well, I want to thank all. I want to thank the people for Long's Peak here who allowed me to come in here to do these cooking demonstrations. Uh, I had a great time doing it and those stuff. I know everybody else did. There's a lot of food people. The whiskey people over there were just sending me back whiskey just because we kept feeding them all day. So that was a good thing. Um, thank, we're going to get you all a chance to go and try all of this. But thank you all very much. And as the IRSA, Slunga Fleur. Well, until we meet again.